Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Welcome to being here. I'm Ariel. I'm Shia. And today's episode, <laughs> Hiding in Plain Sight. Yes. You know, when I was a child, one of my favorite nursery rhymes, or not nursery rhymes, but poems, uh, was one by Dorothy Keeley Aldis, although I didn't know who Her wrote name. it. It goes, I'm hiding, I'm hiding, and no one knows where, for all they can see is my toes in my hair. And that used to really uh, amuse me, particularly because the, the book of poems had an image of a little boy hiding behind a curtain in the, at least I think it did. In my mind, it had a little boy hiding behind a curtain. And I realize that most of us. Well, I, you, as you say that, I remember we had a, a woodchuck here. Yes. That climbed up a tree and it was hiding its eyes behind the leaves thinking we didn't see it. It was a little sapling kind of bent over. So it's not like it was tree climber, but it did climb the tree because it was enough horizontal that it could do it. But it was very funny when we're out here going, hey, I see you. And it just froze with its eyes hidden behind uh, that tree. Well, that's similar to all of us. We think, oh, if we freeze, our friends won't see those things we are judging about ourselves. But really, everybody already sees it, knows it, and has no problem with it. They We're love you, including yes. all of your foibles. Foibles is a good word. What is a foible for all it's of those an, who are not it, English a, speakers? It's an idiosyncrasy. It's a strange, quirky behavior. That is yeah, something aligned with you that is part of you, but not necessarily something that everybody has. Yeah. Anyway. Should we talk about one of our favorite subjects? Listening, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Because listening is key. Listening actually can pull you into the current moment of your life. If you don't comment in your thoughts about what's being said, because if you comment in your thoughts, you're stepping back outside the current moment to think about what's being said rather than fully engage in listening and let the information come into you without sorting it as to what you already know and what's new information. Now, if you are commenting, it's not a bad thing. That's change. Change is good and bad and right and wrong. And a better you would not comment on things. In transformation, it's about a non-judgmental seeing and engagement with what is. It's if about the isness of the moment, not whether you like it or dislike it, approve of it, don't approve of it, want it, don't want it. It's just about what is, is. Now, I imagine you've listened to this show before. And if you haven't listened to this podcast. Welcome. Welcome. But <laughs> if you have, basically, this is an opportunity to strengthen the skill set or the muscle of listening so that as you go about your day, as you go about your week, your life, it's easier to directly engage rather than pull back and comment about yourself, how you're doing, what other people are doing. It makes it so much easier when you're actually here as opposed to talking to yourself. That's should, right. Shall we take our first guest? Yes, we shall. All right. Miss Elka. Hi. Hi, Ariane and Shia. Yeah, here I am, uh, Elke from Hamburg, Germany. Welcome, Elke from Hamburg, Germany. Like, yeah. And I would like to share a story or uh, yeah, something I, I, um, I yes, a story for, from my, out of my life, which uh, is fitting in the hiding in plain sight. Um, 
I'm, um, I'm singing with two other women and we are singing our own songs. And uh, once in a while we are doing a concert or we, we do these songs we, we choose before in a scene. And at that time, it was a scene where we uh, made a open jailhouse day. I don't know if you have these uh, like open museum, open night in theaters. And we, we made it up to have an open day in the, the jail where visitors could come. And I played the um, correction officer and I had uh, a school uniform from my daughter from who had been in, in Uruguay, a gray school uniform with a very short gray skirt and a tie. And I played it and sang my songs. And afterwards, one of our friends who had assisted uh, this, this concert, he came to me and told me, I knew I knew that you would have fun with this role. Uh, you, you enjoyed it a lot. And I felt a little ashamed because I thought it's not, not a good way to be so, see, at one hand side, strict and severe with my, the other women were prisoners of me. And on the end, uh, at the same time, also sexy with this, skirt and but so I feel a little ashamed but then I could see that that what I tried to hide um, was visible uh, that I like to tell people what they shall do and um, yeah and even yeah that I'm not the shy girl what I thought I am for many years and uh, it's so funny that you think you're a shy girl because even from the very first day we met you that would not have been my impression of you no <laughs> no not really and I, I love the picture you created. still think I'm, uh, I'm, I'm shy <laughs> yeah. yes. but given your profession not only uh were you, uh, before you retired, a gynecologist, uh, you also trained and are a coach, a sexual coach and a sex therapist. So I don't think that that particular profession lends itself to somebody who's a shy girl, because you're talking to people who have been experiencing sexual dysfunction about the, how their bodies work and what to do. And you may even be showing them what to do. This is not the activity of a shy girl. Yeah, Just but a little reality check here. But I think this changed or this came by being with you as well. And that I, I trust myself more, what I can, what I'm capable to do, what I can tell people. And I dare to, for instance, doing this uh, special training for uh, sexual therapy. I think 10 years ago, I wouldn't have done it. I would uh, told me that's not something you should do. What would, what would the other people, what would the other friends say uh, in this age, uh, taking a training first? spending so much money for this training and then working in such a part of, uh, of uh, a special part like sexuality. Yes. Well, <clears throat> I remember the first night I met you. Wearing black leather. You were wearing black <laughs> leather, right? Pants and top. Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> you are much less self-expressive than you are these days. That is absolutely true. And that tightness was probably to cover your shyness. Because mm -hmm. I do agree that basically there's a shy being in you. 
So I have no. Yeah. <laughs> I think there's something else, though. I believe, and I have very little proof other than you're here on this show today, that you doubt yourself as being worth as much as other people see your worth. Sometimes, yes. Well, of course, sometimes. I would imagine that sometimes is more than you know. I'll tell you why. Just I remember back in many years ago when you were still a gynecologist and we came to Hamburg and for some reason I had had uh, a, a... some kind of vaginal infection. I had some problem and Mm -hmm. you were kind enough to see me on one of your lunch breaks. And uh, first I discovered the system in Germany is very different, how they even, you know, look in a woman's vagina. The whole thing was different and it was surprisingly pleasant. Uh, But I have in the recent past had a gynecological exam by somebody who was so intensely prudish here in the United States. I kept dreaming, oh, I wish Elka, you know, (laughs) because they were embarrassed to see uh, my quote private parts. And it was, it, it, it was, of course, my family doctor, the, the, the receptionist said, oh yeah, that's no problem. They do gynecological exams. He didn't know where any of the equipment was. He said, I haven't done this in so long. Oh my God. And he was just terribly, terribly embarrassed. And once he got in there, he didn't know what he was looking at actually. And it's like, oh no, this doesn't look right. You have to go to a specialist. <laughs> the specialist said, oh yes, this is not a big deal. This is normal for a person of your age, but I can understand why he was concerned. So uh, your expertise, your relaxation, your uh, you-ness, your ability to have people around you feel well in themselves, you absolutely underestimate that. You underestimate your own greatness. <clears throat> See, uh, you, you have a conversation you listen to that invalidates your beauty. So you doubt your attractiveness and it underestimates your gift to the world that you make a difference. And I know that we're only talking about one slice of Elka but if, if we look at the holistic approach, how you do anything, how you do everything, you know, a hol- holographic projection. I want you to say that again, because it got a little broken. How you do anything is how you do everything. See, and so you're, when you're fully engaged in what you're up to, you're fine. But when you contemplate yourself, when you think about how you're doing, that's when the self-doubt shows up and it really invalidates all your successes. So here you are in this performance, which you have rehearsed for, so it, it gave you some level of freedom. And you're singing a song, you're wearing a sexy outfit, you're telling these ladies what to do, and you're having fun doing it. Uh, And even, I know people can't see you, we're doing this on Zoom, I'm watching your face light up as we're talking about it. (laughs) Your friends have known this part of you, the only person that's been hiding it- Attempting to. Is you from yourself. And, that the ability to tell somebody what to do is also a gift. Yes, that's right. Yes, and I, I can feel this and I, I see it also in the faces of my clients that or how they act with me and how they come back or recommend me to others. And it feels, yes, it feels good. It's, very often it feels really good. 
yeah. Yeah, but uh, I I hid, hide, hid, hidden. Yes, I hid my, I think I hid my light, but now it's much less. And you supported me in doing this, really. Well, you know, I just, I, I can't let it go. I love that. Thank you for the telling us that we've supported you. And But when you say this hiding from yourself is much less, it's as if you're making progress, which is, of course, how we are trained to think. But from moment to moment, you know, in the moments when you're upset, pretty much everything is hidden from you. In the moments you're here, uh, your world is revealed. So I, I hate to... Yeah, it's the difference. Ariel's talking about the difference between transformation and change. Mm -hmm. In change, it's incremental. You get better a little at a time or even a lot at a time, but you're never fully, completely there. You're still mm -hmm. working on yourself as though you're a project or a work in progress. With transformation, you just realize that you are complete in this moment and you are perfect exactly the way you are. You can't really be different than you are, so there's more proof of your, of your perfection. Now, if you want to find fault with yourself, you'll find fault with yourself. And if Perfectly. you're finding fault with yourself, that's not bad. It's like, huh, look at this. I'm really finding finding fault with myself today. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll let you in on a little secret. <clears throat> At about five o'clock this morning, I woke up and I had these interesting thoughts. I had the thought, you know, you don't really make a difference with people. You know, I, I don't know. If, you don't know what to say. You don't know what to do. You don't, you don't really make a difference in people's lives. So then when I got up, I said I had this interesting conversation with myself today that I don't know who I am and I don't make a difference. And I'm, you know, I, I said, oh, we're doing a, a podcast recording this morning. I Let's who see is. who the guests are. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we're getting ready for the creativity and intuition course. Yeah. And yeah. when we link up with the people in our environment, we our thought processes tend to link up. But the difference between us and a lot of people is, we notice them as a phenomena rather than judging ourselves for having them. So when we have that kind of thought, we notice it, we don't judge it, it disappears. It gives the people we're connected to also permission to let that dissolve away. And it gives us hints as to what they're working on. <laughs> mm -hmm. So might be what was the time when I started this morning and I saw uh, a client with whom I have to talk English and this is really still uh, talking <laughs> sexual therapy in English it's still another um, strength or another uh, I don't know the word where I have to care yeah. more and yeah yeah level and of I felt a little, yeah I felt a little yes waiting for how it works and it worked out well Excellent. But it doesn't mean you didn't doubt yourself beforehand. No, I did. I did. Yes, I did. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. I did. Hey, thank you so much for being with us. Yeah, today. Really, thank you. really a pleasure. And I love seeing your face light up when you see. Uh -huh, yeah. yes, I was doubting myself. Yeah. Yes. That's great. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're yeah, so Elka, welcome. we are connected. That's right, really. It's <laughs> very you. sweet to be connected to you. Yeah. It's time for our listener feedback spotlight. Okay, so here we go. We're going to hear from one of our listeners about how transformation has impacted her life or his life. Let's see. Yeah, and if you'd like to learn more about what we're up to, Come, you know, you could register for any of our upcoming virtual courses. Or sign up for our newsletter. Just visit transformationmadeeasy.com. It really is easy. It is easy if you know the way. This is Karen from New York. I love 
global video seminar. It's so much fun. Uh, it opens up a lot of doors for me. It makes my job search easy, fun, and really awesome. Do you want to have well-being with consistency? Connect with people all over the world from the comfort of your own home at Errol and Shire's lively interactive Living Made Easy virtual seminars. Join any of their two-hour online events or take a deep dive into the magic of being you at a virtual weekend seminar. Come on, let's connect. Find out more and register at transformationmadeeasy.com. If you would like to meet with us in person and folks that are as amazing as Elka, you can join us for our Living Made Easy seminars. The next one coming up is this Saturday and then Monday. Uh, you can find out about these two hours virtual seminars that happen on Zoom uh, at transformationmadeeasy.com. And just so you know, the Saturday uh, seminars and the, the Tuesdays that we have each month are translated into German so folks like Elka can relax a little bit more because it's in both languages. And for those of us who are speedy, who are English speakers, we get a chance to just slow down and listen to the German even though we may not understand the language. So the rhythm of it's quite lovely. If you'd like to join us for a weekend seminar. We have creativity and intuition coming up on August 7th and 8th. And that's a Saturday and a Sunday. And as you can see, while we were speaking with Elka, it is uh, an amazing skill set uh, to hone, recognize, have. Your life becomes not only easier because you're more tuned to follow those hunches, but you're less disturbed by uh, thought processes that show up. Well, the, the, the purpose, if you will, of our seminars is for you to transform your ability to experience living. So you're experiencing your life rather than thinking about should I, should I shouldn't I, or is this right or wrong? Uh, that doesn't mean you won't do things appropriately. It's just more about discovering how to experience your life rather than think about. Yeah, you know, as you say that, I realize it includes the ability to be here rather than look forward to an event you think is going to be better or well, rehash well, an event. Last that... night, Ariel and I went down to a river that we uh, go fly fishing at. And uh, on the way down the dirt road to get there, uh, I have to keep uh, looking at the road rather than looking down at the parking area below because uh, <laughs> Well, I'm wondering whether there are other people on the river. And whether or not they'll be in our spot. Those places <laughs> we like to go. Yes, because you do that, you drive off the road. That's right. All right. We have another guest with us today. Yes, we do. Let's speak with Emmy. Hi, Emmy. Where are you calling in from today? Or Zooming in is probably the more appropriate thing. Hey, I'm, I'm come calling in from Richmond, Virginia. It's so nice to see you. Welcome to being here. Thank you. Yes. It's nice to be here. Thank you so much. Um, I happened to see the title of this show on hiding. And um, I think I want to just say something. You know, when I uh, first found you, um, a friend of mine um, from Australia actually sent me the link to your radio shows at the time, the podcast now, and uh, her name's Sophia. And recently I got a message from Sophia uh, from WhatsApp. And so we connected it again. And um, it was so lovely because I met her when she was 42 and she was trying to get pregnant and she just had given birth at 49 
to a baby. And so we were able to celebrate that. But the one thing that she said to me was that she said, I've given out the link to these radio shows a lot, but you're the only person that actually, that I know actually did something about it. And, you know, that was really kind of a wake up surprise for me that I would, was the only one that, you know, when I looked at that, that I was courageous enough to get on a train and go to New York and come to one of your first seminars. And um, I find myself, um, I feel like I get in, um, like, I don't want, you know, like when I hide, I find like I stick, like I kind of come out of a shell and then I kind of come back and I go back in. So, I was one of those that woke up this morning saying, I don't know what a question I want to ask today. Um, but you know what I find interesting, dear? Yeah. You said you come to one of our first seminars. It was your first seminar with us, not our first rodeo. True. We've been doing this for about 35 years together. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, yeah. and we haven't known you quite that long. No. But- but you see, my dear, you underestimate your courageous nature. That your friend Sophia has given out the link to our radio shows. Now podcast. Now podcast mm -hmm. to so many people. And you followed up on it. You saw a possibility for yourself. And you gave yourself the gift of going for your life. That's courageous. That gives me goosebumps. Mm -hmm. See, it takes courage to go for your life. It's so much easier to believe. I'm going to say this wrong, but I'm going to say it anyway. The lies that we are told by other people. Or the lies that we're told by ourselves in moments of contraction when we're young and then repeat over time. Right. So we, we, we've... Most people have quit on themselves at a very young age. They, they've been disappointed by life. Things haven't turned out the way they thought they would. And then they quit. But you're not a quitter. You, you know? have a tenacity that you have underestimated. Anybody listening to the and, show And you may just think you're just stubborn, but it isn't stubborn. I've been... It's more than stubborn. It's a tenacious... Engagement. Drive, right, mm -hmm. to engage in your life. And that's just such a gift, Emmy. I, you know, I, um, I recently have been looking at, like, I have, like, it's just like a part of me, this thing, like, to go for it. And I, I think was when I did the speak up with you, uh, Ariel and Shia and then Susan, um, I, that song that we were doing, like, I had, this thought that I was always giving up on myself, but I was able to see that wasn't true, you know, that I yes. have not, you know, like I, I, the toughest of times I've been able to somehow, and you guys have been a huge help with um, just allowing myself to be with wherever I am. Well, the interesting thing that happens when you be with wherever you are, it completes itself. Yeah. That's the third principle of instantaneous transformation. What you allow to be exactly as it is completes itself in an instant. You don't have to work on anything. In fact, our first book was called Working on Yourself Doesn't Work because it doesn't, it perpetuates itself. Because anything you resist that you work on keeps coming back around again and again until you allow it to complete itself. And that's got to do with forgiving yourself for being mm. you because you are a perfect you. You can't be different than you are. You might as well celebrate the magnificence of your life. A lot of people wish that their uh, lives would improve or that things that they've been tussling with in their mind would resolve themselves. But that you're here 
being on this podcast, that you listen to the podcast, that you still engage in uh, things with us. Now that we've moved to a virtual format, you come uh, mm -hmm. from Virginia, you zoom in. Uh, there's something quite amazing about your willingness to actually look and see it's painless. What's more pain, what, what causes pain is when you're trying to hide something from yourself. Cause you usually think you're a whole lot worse or that you're bad or awful and it's never true. Yeah. I, um, you know, I've had the, I've, I've had the fortunate ability for my son to come back home here and, um, to be the one thing that I noticed to be able to be in this smaller space with my son and to not make him wrong and allow me to like soften some of these edges that I've noticed the resistance in myself we've created such a I mean just being here and I've really had this I thought, you know, I owned a home improvement and home furnishing store. So I help people create really beautiful environments for themselves. It came to me just recently. Oh my gosh, my whole inside has transformed. Like I really have this presence that with being with my son, he has transformed his entire life. He wants to live. He's, you know, it's just been a beautiful almost like a love story that's unfolded between me and my son. Yes, and you've done nothing I, to try to fix it. I did nothing to try to fix it. And believe you me, in the beginning, when he complained, I wanted to make him wrong. <laughs> and yes, I was. didn't. Well, like it was that. probably two sides. One, you wanted to either make him wrong or the other, you wanted to find a way to make it better. Oh, that too. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and so, you know, that's the flip side of the coin. And if you just are with them as you were and hear it without doing anything with it, then other possibilities emerge, which clearly you're living right now. Yeah. So, and the other thing is this, your mind will never be able to grasp how it works. You know, I think that I've been one of those people that wanted to understand all that. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's really, I can see the mind. I can hear that not sure thing, like, oh, like that doubt piece kind of step in. And then I kind of retract or feel like I don't know what to say. And I feel like I'm going to get in trouble and I get embarrassed and I kind of retract. And um, let me tell you something about what I've noticed about that retraction for you. Okay. The retraction is all a mental one. It's not here. Cause I see it even as we are talking now, you have some uh, physicalities that is in your mind retraction, but for us, we still you'll see you fully. So uh, if you are listening to this and you're driving or don't do this, but if you close <laughs> your eyes for a moment, I mean, as a listener, if you close your eyes, you suddenly think you're not here. Oh. But we still see you. Yeah. And from time to time, when you have a thought that you find embarrassing, you kind of curl your shoulders and back up a little bit, lower your head and blink a little bit longer like yeah. so that we don't see the thought but you see the thought we see the thought going by we may not know exactly what it is but it's like hey emmy's still here she's just having a, a self-deprecating thought right now i think i have this whole thing that i don't want to be wrong you know like i've got to you know well, i don't want to say it wrong? wrong you know it's just who like who wants oh. to say it wrong I mean, Elka was just talking about that. Yeah. Yeah. You know, she was concerned about her English skills. Yeah. Which are notable, by the way. What if you can't do it wrong? See, we have the, the strange idea that we are contr controlling our universe. What if it's just all happening and we're just part of it and we have absolutely no control we only think we have control 
oh, feels a lot more relaxing. <laughs> That's right. Suddenly, there's a, the pressure is taken off. And here's the thing. If you look at me, mm -hmm. all the things that you have accomplished in your life have happened, even though you did things to undermine them happening. Wow. True. Yeah. You see that? Yeah, I do. I mean, lots. Yeah. Even yeah. though you had self-doubt, it happened anyway. You know, while I'm uh -huh. still thinking of it, will you please mm -hmm. thank Sophia? Oh, yes. From the two of us. I will. And, and a shout out to you, Sophia, and a personal invitation for her to join you now, she could, you know, in Australia, we regularly have people like Paisia or in Australia or Cheryl in Hong Kong, yeah. because I know they are significantly ahead of us, but the, the time frame often works for the Saturday mornings or also for the, the Monday nights, it's like six in the morning there. So depending on her time zone, but close. So in, she could join you. Yes. And uh, you could actually see each other. And also when Paisia comes to the weekends, she says she pretends she's on a night flight because they usually start at like three in the morning for her and she does a little night flight thing. So, okay. you know, there are lots of possibilities these days. Yeah, I did uh, ask her to join me on um, Monday night, but I really think, you know, because of the baby, you know, we went into that, but I will love to invite her and continue that conversation and, and open up that door. I'd love to have her. Uh, she's a beautiful woman and um, I really do thank her too. Please let her know her baby is welcome. Oh, we have young infants That's uh, often and it's so easy even to breastfeed. You just make the camera a little high and nobody sees what you're doing. Okay. <laughs> I will tell her that because that was her thing. Well, the baby thing. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Because, uh, yeah. You know. Yeah. They'll bring their infants and we get to watch them grow. It's very fun. Hey, thanks for being Thank you. here. Thank you so much. Really, I really appreciate yeah. you. You're so welcome. We appreciate Emmy. you, Emmy. Yes. Yep. You have a mm. good day. Thank you. We will. Hi. I enjoyed this podcast. If you enjoyed this podcast, share it. You know, take a look. Some of you may get discouraged. Oh, I shared this thing with this person, that person. I got no feedback from them. But take a look at Emmy. If, if her friend Sophia had given up after the third or the fourth or the fifth person, she may not ever have shared it with Emmy. And she made a difference in Emmy's life forever and in all of ours because we get to know Emmy. So uh, if you feel to do that, thanks in advance. Next week's episode. Yes. The being present makeover. <laughs> it's uh well we'll talk about that then. We'll talk about that next week. Yeah, we'll be back next week. So come on back. And don't miss being, being here. here.